Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm an under the weather high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. And since I'm sick, I wanna see some stuff that's gonna cheer me up. We got some history memes today. All right, this collection from Drew is called Watch This Before Your World History Exams. So we get to watch memes and learn to prepare for our test. Sounds like a win-win. All right, support Drew by going to the link down below. That's gonna link you to this original video. Be sure to support his channel. All right, let's get started. Oh, we're, ju we're just going right into like Nazi Germany, huh? We're just, we're just going, we're coming in that way. We're coming in hot. World War II almost sounds made up. Is it just me or does the plot of World War II sound just too perfect? Like something Why? you'd expect from a cheesy superhero movie. I'm not going to go too in depth, but just think about it. Clear rising action where we see the characters taking shape. Eventually the tension is ignited. Several plot twists, betrayals, etc. UK refuses to give up and instead fights for what's right. Antagonist almost wins. <laughs> Things are looking bleak, but then there's a decisive turning point. The good guys close in on the bad guys. Allied and Soviet troop movements are coincidentally perfectly timed time to meet in the middle of Germany, morally ambiguous frenemy of the good guys goes full evil and is set up as the new villain for the sequel. I guess they're talking about the- <laughs> I guess so. That's more just like a writing mechanism because I think uh, you could you could probably narrate every single war like this, especially by the victors where you get to just write the story, right? Cold war. Am I just insane? Not to mention, I feel like with a lot of wars, the evil side is a bit more ambiguous, but it really doesn't get much more obviously evil than no no Germany. Compare that to like Okay, wait, wait, wait. This has got to be the first World War II map that I've seen where the Germans are in blue. It's like I guess it makes sense even though yeah, Nazi symbols and stuff that the Soviets have to be red and then I guess by extension the British do as well. But I don't think I've ever seen a blue map that covers the Axis powers. To mention, I feel like with a lot of wars, the evil side is a bit more ambiguous, but it really doesn't get much more obviously evil than no, no Germany. Compare that to like <laughs> World War One. You have this chain of alliances and all these monarchies and I mean, more interesting just fighting for more power. Way more great. <laughs> Rome, the 20th. I told you I'm a World War. I, I, I World War Two, of course. Fat, you got to study World War Two, but World War One more intriguing. Yes, the, the World War II is so Hollywood. You know what I mean? It's so Hollywood. But like the real analysis, the deeper level, you got to go World War One, right? All right, what do we got? 8th of September, 1870. Pope, whoever touches the wall will be excommunicated. <laughs> Meanwhile, this dude, a Jewish officer, firing the first cannonball. I guess, uh, I guess it didn't really count for him. This man literally said, you have no you have power no here. Power the nation here. of Austria losing no land after World War II. Meanwhile, Poland and Czechia losing land to the USSR despite being part of the Allies. How exactly does that work? Austria... It was kind of in that gray zone, though. I guess they did get Anschluss. What a way. Well, I, we, Austria, they lost. They didn't have much to lose. They lost everything in uh, uh, World War One. That's where they lost their empire. There's no more empire to take away from um, there. Uh, for As far as Poland and all, you're going to have to ask the Soviet Union. Sorry. Poland got Auschwitz too, <laughs> just by two different nations and with a military. Bro, yeah. we gotta check out Plymouth Rock. The pilgrims landed there, bro. It's a piece of history. It's gonna be so cool. Trust me, bro. Meanwhile, it Plymouth Rock. Yeah, if you didn't know, we Americans literally have just like a pet rock. It's literally so entertaining. When you win an Isn't that thing like fake as heck though? From what I understand, because like the Plymouth Rock was this place. If you didn't know, it's supposed to be the place where the pilgrims landed. Um, influential, you know, migrants to what would eventually be the uh, British 13 colonies. But yeah, and on there, there's like a date scratched in 1620 or whatever. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, like it's a total just like tourist trap thing. But isn't it like not legit at all? literally have just like a pet rock it's literally so entertaining when you win an incredible victory against the vikings only to learn the normans are invading on the opposite side of the country um it just really didn't end for that that part of british history pretty sorry. much just constant sorry chaos. britain gee friends how did you invent <laughs> the baguette <laughs> can we just call the normans though like like viking adjacent though because weren't they basically descendants of them um, but yeah, you, you finally, you got hundreds of years of like occupation basically by the Danes and stuff. And then bam, Williams here, break it in. All right. Baguette, France joke. All right. 
We're still the doing these. History. Pretty much just constant chaos. Gee, France, how did you invent the baguette? Your national bread? Cut baguettes to 1896. All right, you numb nuts. Here's a bread you can cut by hand. Now hand me over your knives and stop oofing each other. Meanwhile, these two Frenchmen just kind of looking on. It was literally just invented to stop the violence. Me? Okay, I'm, I will never knock on baguettes. When I went to Paris, dude, the best food you could get that you don't because Paris is crazy expensive. Dude, all you got to do is get yourself a baguette. They are delicious. They'll be like one, two euros. You got, and then the locals eat it too. So, you know, it's cool. So, you got this big old thing, and it's not awkward to hold a huge baguette, right, in one hand while you're walking down the street in your business attire, and then some little cup of either like butter or cheese. Dude, it's delicious. It's cheap. I love it. Thank you, France. Watching the French measure distance in miles in Napoleon 2023. Ooh. Imperial. Uh, I didn't notice that. What else is there to say, but there's nothing we can do. Sir, they didn't include this Rest of the as world a scene wrong. in your movie. I was actually so terrified they were actually going to include this. Serbia, Bosnia, What, just like sad Napoleon? movie i was actually so terrified they were actually going to include this serbia bosnia <laughs> and croatia all ended their brutal ethnic war all just to get out of daytona ohio wait did they Dayton, really ohio? bring these people to ohio Jeez, talk about top 10 most horrific torture methods to get what wait, you that's want that's where they the signed USA it in 1975 wait that's where they signed it freaking brutal yugoslav wars I mean, it's an Air Force base in Dayton, Ohio. What the heck? Ohio. They're still going to make fun of you, though. Top 10 most horrific torture methods to get what you want. The USA in 1975. The USSR in 1975. Meanwhile, these two in space. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't know, the Cold War was really only happening on land. We actually love each other well, when we were outside of Earth, though. Space Cut to race. Christianity kind of in over 1054. There was the Orthodox Church. This yes. Schism. But what about Orthodox Church 2? With a slightly different name, but yeah. And you can keep going yeah. with this because it was only going to keep on splitting. Protestant yeah, so uh, 1054 is the Aim, date of yeah, the Great Schism. The Great Schism. That's when um, basically you can see it as the official split between the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox, Orthodox uh, Church operating basically out of Greece and Eastern Europe. Um, you know, the the it, and and this was already something that it could it honestly could have happened way er, way earlier because the Eastern Church was very much operating very independent from the West. I mean, honestly, since Basically, Rome moved basically since Constantine, since the Roman capital moved to Constantinople. But this kind of like made it official that way. But you do see a brief kind of maybe they could get back together about 50 years after this with the Crusades, where uh, the emperor of the Byzantine Empire and then Pope Urban is like, all right, we'll work together and maybe you can get back together. Didn't work <laughs> well, with this because it was in fact, it actually gets worse because you get like Fourth Crusade where you get like Catholic Crusaders and stuff coming in. And and just like sacking Constantinople, the Orthodox, and yeah, that didn't work very well. They keep on splitting. Protestantism want to see me do it again? Um, what, sir? Napoleon is back. Lol. Just send the Fifth Regiment to capture that uh, bad person. What? Here I am. Oof, your emperor, if you wish. And if you watch the movie, you know uh, they did not. In fact, you can even say they kind of switched teams. That must have been the most insane comeback in history. Watch my Imagine review for of 10 uh, months Napoleon being a French movie. person, never thinking Napoleon would ever come back. Then he just does. And everyone's just like, yeah. I like how it says, hold on, hold on. Look at this. says, <laughs> dissolution. After ruling Elba for 10 for for 10 months he ruled the tiny island that he was exiled to it can't just be like hey he was just there exiled basically uh, semi imprisoned there you know, he was the the ruler of elba french person never <laughs> thinking napoleon would ever come elba. back then he just does and everyone's just like yo if Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in 2018, Kaiser Wilhelm tweeting out this picture and the okay. Tsar saying, my thoughts and prayers go to the Habsburgs. King George says, no words, the British Empire stands with you in tough times. Also, we have uh, the lights over iconic buildings in other countries. I mean, you know what? Maybe <laughs> this would have avoided a World actually cool War I scenario, though. If only we could have told them just to change their Facebook profile pic. Canadians, when finding <laughs> out that burning down a library, hotel, and two-story house doesn't count <laughs> War as a victory. Well, obviously, <laughs> referring to the war of 1812. <laughs> Canadians, nobody cares about the war of 1812. I'm sorry. Nobody cares.
12. This argument is never going to end. I wish no. we had XP bars so I'd feel more motivated. Wow. Hey, not bad. This guy running into Charles V oh, two seconds more later. Hatchbirds. I literally just. Here's my whole thing. Okay. They'll, they'll be like, all right. Technically, XP bars, okay, so I got I beef with more I got motivated. beef. Wow. Hey, not bad. This guy running into. Okay. Here's my beef. Okay. Help me out with this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Spain colonizes. You see this basically half of the Western hemisphere, right? And yes, Spain is like under rule by Charles V, who is a Habsburg running out of the Holy Roman Empire. But people will like think he is like the ruler of all of this. And I feel like it's so much more indirect than that. And I'm not just saying because it's like someone from Europe having an empire overseas, but like Holy Roman empire through Spain, through then the Americas, it's like too many things re removed to consider Charles V the emperor of all of this in what in, in Western hemisphere. Am I off on this? To Charles V, two seconds later, I am literally just a nobody. Comparison is the thief of joy. Though Charles V can be considered one of the most powerful people of all time, he was <laughs> until until uh um. Well, a couple of things. Henry VIII uh, and uh, Martin Luther, they took a big old chunk and hit him in the metaphorical groin or Habsburg chin. He was apparently pretty depressed still. Very unfulfilled at life. I feel like that's a normal thing for a lot of very successful people. They try to accomplish so much uh, to fulfill whatever's missing inside. Hmm, <laughs> the economy under Philip III. Philip III inherited a disastrous economy from his father, Philip II. They were essentially a bankrupt nation by 1598. España, donde esta el where's the oro, gold? or Spain. Spain, where's the gold? All right. <laughs> Shout outs and support for all of the 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 leaders, the 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 um, leaders of nations that inherited horrible financial situations that were not their fault. I, I, I OK, I, I have empathy for you. OK. All right. Do you guys feel that way at all about Henry the 16th or Henry Louis the 16th in France? He inherited a bad thing, but he didn't also he was also a PR nightmare. You know, those kind of people. It's like a no-win situation. Imagine waiting your entire life to finally be king, only to realize, wait, my dad ruined everything. Japan and Brazil in the year 1900 versus Brazil and Japan in the year yeah. 2000. Time might change, but clearly some things stay the same. Yeah. One of those things is the love that Brazil and Japan have for each other. Brazil still has the highest amount of Japanese population that live outside of Japan. I was going to say, charging you is it, isn't Brazil basically American Japan? You, you better the run. Americas? No, says this wait, wait, population just... that live outside of Japan. I'm charging you. You better run. No, says this spearman. But uh, what, what I'm on this? a horse. I don't care. That doesn't make any sense. Too bad. Again, long pointy sticks ended up being Eichmann. a whole lot more OP than one might think. Although it's all how you deal with long horses. pointy sticks aren't created equal. Clearly some are better than others. But ultimately, they're going to stop a lot of things. Dude, and, yeah. Hey, play Age of Empires. You'll know. Pikeman. Just rip through horsemen. They can't get close to you on their horse because you got a pointy boy. Ancient battles be like we have European slash Arab soldier talking to another European slash Arab soldier. Okay. This is a little prep talk before the war, kind of a motivational What's speech saying, sort of though? thing. Uh, yeah, and that changes pretty much everything. Uh, honestly. To those in those days, that is pretty much what an elephant was to them. The Navy SEALs, a brotherhood so tight that even the devil himself couldn't break that okay. bond. Damn, I kind of just wish you didn't leave John Chapman on a mountain by himself and then still get awarded a Medal of Honor. Okay, I know what video <laughs> I'm about to watch at 3 a.m. tonight after this. Medal of Honor Eastern Eastern countries be like, My oh, what do I do? Uh, <laughs> they're literally just gonna float away. What? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what is this from? Oh. <laughs> oh, he's just like swag dancing while people are freaking devastated. Oh, dude, this. Uh, they're this literally is some edge, away. Uh, edge You're Lord beautiful, crap. says this guy to this girl. Come with me to retake Constantinople. Oh, um, well, I mean, maybe she's still beautiful, but this guy's got hey. much more important things to do now. Hey. I destroyed your. Hey. Uh, you guys, y'all dreaming about Western, you know, r r r r how many times a day do you think about, you know, Rome and fantasize about it? Come on. We know deeper. There's another level of that. 
you want to take Constantinople back. Army and burned your Nebit? capital, Muscovite. Now you will do everything I want. Yes, I agree to become your vassal and tributary. Just leave us. That's a great raid. A lot we of the Muscovite Duke and looted so much. Hey, uh, let's take that small town on the way home. Hey, Russian, you're all my slaves now under this treaty. Open the gates and come to my camp. Really? I'm not sure. May I take a look at the paper, please? Of course. See how pathetic your Duke is and let me rightfully take everything of value from your town? I'm your slave, slave. now. And don't forget to give that paper back. Boom. What paper? I don't remember you giving me anything. What? Okay, I've had enough of you. Johan, give him hell. Oh, look, it's in the trash. No, you are my slaves. You can't take away the document that enslaves you. For saving Ryzan. This is like not a meme. This this is now turned into like a manga. And our honor, I grant you the title of Boyar. Thank you, my duke. This man Boyar is a is pretty, legal mastermind. Could you imagine hoggers. him in the courtroom? We have documents that your client murdered this lady. He just takes the paper and throws it in the trash. What are you talking about? Sal is tonight's <laughs> biggest loser. For his punishment, he must convince Marie Antoinette to travel in two low-profile carriages yeah, on the French caught. royalty's escape from revolutionary-controlled Paris instead of one big, easily noticeable golden carriage. Failure to convince her will result in the French royalty's capture and subsequent execution. Execution. Man, when you put it like that, it's like she kind of, she, she kind of deserves this rush. Yeah. So the the this is with Louis the Sixteenth and and uh, Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette, right? Queen of France is Austrian, and during the French Revolution, the king and queen were trying to bail and basically cover of night um, and try to cross the border, and they got uh, apprehended at the uh, at border crossing. They're trying to get yeah you know, the country towards like Austria and stuff, and um, yeah, they got they got um, identified and. Um, one of the stories about it is they got identified by how they look on money, <laughs> but it's going to be a little deeper than that. I think the passport, because you got to like, have passports and stuff. That ended up being another one of the horrible PR things that happened um, with the with the king, where obviously with that, he looked like he was, you know, not just bailing during France's like time of need, but potentially, you know, conspiring against France. Right. And the revolutionaries by trying to leave the country and probably get a coalition to come back and take it. So that was the final straw. I feel like like that was the final straw for the monarchy. He's now an enemy of the state. We know both of them get executed. 1793. Russian artist in 1844 creating a painting Four. of British soldiers executing an Indian rebel. Oh, this wasn't going to go well. Him exhibiting this work in the USA based, based, oh, unfathomably gosh. based. Based. Meanwhile, him exhibiting it in the UK. Cringe, cringe. What the freak is this, mate? No, you can't just depict us like that. Um, actually, we haven't actually. used that execution method since 1856. Oh. <laughs> Why does this so event feel so modern? Super Countries rebellion. in the 1800s portrayed by memes. The USA can Captains of industry. Obviously, this is the UK. Germany's saying I'm gonna make my own. Hey, they empire. were. The United States by 1900 surpassed the British. Actually, so did the Germans too in industrial Our, power. Did. Meanwhile, there's China. They were in their century of humiliation. Parry this, you filthy casual. Those are samurais with guns. The Ottoman Empire as they the did. Iron Man of Europe. They use muskets. Of Austria beating the crap out of Hungary. There's Francis <laughs> Napoleon the Third doing his thing. And at the end of the 1800s, they did complete the Eiffel Tower. And then Paraguay yeah. in their grave after 1880s. the Triple Alliance War. Oof, oh yeah. Population. Well, yeah, that pretty much. I need to learn more about that. I, I, I've been doing it the. Some of those Latin American conflicts there, we have these alliances America against Britain. And then interesting how um, if, when you go deeper too, you'll find out like the United States getting involved too. It describes the whole thing. I feel like we could have had the USA. Although, I mean, in anything post-World War II, any conflict, had the United States involved in some way, right? Ourselves, though. It's I mean, Cold we War. Did have the Civil War in the 1800s. We could have showed something like this, maybe, for what India was seeing during Russia. that century. This was the British, as we saw from that painting. Cleopatra was only a bed warmer for Caesar. Literally. Yeah, she did nothing else. Meanwhile, in reality, implemented economic reforms, promoted science, and kept Egypt sovereign. That's kind of. pretty much the key there. Based. Kind of. Kind of. And then Caesar comes in. They scootily poop, as John Green says it. And then Mark Anthony comes in. Oh, come on. They were already doing the bidding of the Romans, right? Keeping their autonomy. I don't know. Remember, she's, she's, she's Greek, right? I mean, 
Cleopatra is Greek, people get so annoyed it's like the same topics basically every century Roman at that as time. if they were a new issue. There have been so many wait, wait. people get annoyed about the same topics every century as if they were a new issue. There have been <laughs> True. so many people throughout my time here on YouTube that believe I predict the future. Because like an event will happen, but I released like a video six months ago explaining that event. It, it's, it's literally just history. Like it is just repeating. When you study this stuff, you can kind of begin to predict the future too. Saddam's yeah. chefs. Yeah, that's why, it, yeah, uh, history can be used like like a science science is out is about predicting things based on observations and a lot of things you're doing in history is making observations of the past yeah and you can use them to predict the future people should do that too um with with policies you gotta uh, with things you got to um uh look to historians for that okay because not only does history teach how the world works but it is probably the best predictor of the future um of anything so there's your uh, why is history important to study Thing. Thinking they just got poisoned. Saddam, who oh, just gosh. put hot sauce as a prank. That's a pretty evil prank. But I can see oh, why gosh. people would come to that conclusion. Human rights lawyer Peter Noble, a great grandnephew of Ludwig Noble, Noble accuses the award institution of misusing his family's name and stating that no member of the Noble family has ever had the intention of establishing a prize in economics. He explained <laughs> that Nobel despised people who cared more about profits than society's well being, saying that there is nothing more to indicate that he would have wanted such a prize. That is, um, that is one way to respond to this, but okay, I, I can kind of see what's, what's happening here. Literally <laughs> calling him Dr. TNT. POV, you just brought a sword to a spear fight. <laughs> and seeing all You're these screwed. crows spear memes, I need to get a spear. Meanwhile, the they just need to get some, okay, if you're going to do this, just get some shields and make a phalanx, all right? You're almost there. You're almost there. To being like unstoppable. And seeing all these pro spear memes, I need to get a spear. Meanwhile, the Japanese Navy sinking as many U.S. carriers as possible, but then the U.S. Navy. I, I really love this meme because this is pretty much the U.S.'s military doctrine for like all aspects. It's just like the industrial power. We just keep building and building and building. <laughs> Edward Gibbon, Christianity caused Rome to lose its warrior spirit, leading to its fall for German invaders. Meanwhile, the invaders in question. Oh yeah, hey, wait a second. Kaiser Wilhelm asking <laughs> It lost their spirit of invading of, of invading. What do you guys think about? I mean, it is interesting that a lot of people kind of will note that the official shift to Christianity also happened within the midst of the fall of the Roman Empire. Um, did that ruin their warrior spirit? No. No. <laughs> that that's definitely not gonna be happening. Meanwhile, the invaders in question. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait a second. Kaiser Wilhelm asking the Swiss ambassador. Especially when, the, what would you hey, especially when the Franks, after they convert to Christianity, like once they convert to Christianity, they're they're not like, all right, let's let's be peaceful now. No, they're like Christian warlords spreading Christianity by the sword to all the uh, reaches outside of the Roman Empire. 250k man army do if Germany okay. invaded in the Swiss ambassador what would your 250k man army do if Germany invaded them with 500k men Kaiser Wilhelm when the Swiss ambassador replies shoot twice then go <laughs> home honestly even if Germany had a two to one advantage uh do you really want to go fight the Swiss there's a reason they've stayed so neutral because nobody wants to do it it would literally be Europe's Afghanistan when you try to Actually, that is a great way to say it, Drew. It's totally like that. My grandfather's Swiss. Um, he passed away a few years ago, but he was... Um, everybody in, in Switzerland has military service, and his was during uh, World War II. And I remember asking him, you know, like, what do you think would have happened if, like, Germany, someone like that, had uh, invaded during World War II? He's like, well, if Germany had invaded, I think they would have lost a million men trying to take our country. Switzerland is literally just a big fort. It literally is. It's just a big fort that they can completely lock down. They could bomb every entry into the handful of entries into their country. It's basically in mountains. There's bunkers everywhere. Everyone has basic military training. Um, that's why it's a never of logistical use to ever do that. And that's also why they'll do business with anybody at war, too, because they don't have to worry about basically don't have to worry about being double crossed. To out brutalize English Civil War veterans who have already resorted to cannibalism and lost their humanity. Mm, yeah, I'm not really sure if this strategy is going to work. This is referring yeah. to King Philip's war here. What if I told uh, you that one day Latin will die and everyone will be speaking true. a weird mongrel language created by barbarians who lived on that island where we built a wall? The Romans would literally be horrified if we told them this. Well, if I told them this, I would be speaking that mongrel language they feared so much. <laughs> a small Hey, the church preserved it, right? They preserved it. 
after it died so they could have, you know, basically exclusivity on religious doctrine, right? So it doesn't die out. You just had to, you know, join the seminary, become a monk. <laughs> Nation conquered a lot and is a major cultural reference today. Okay, Obviously, Greek, Greece is Japan. bubbles. But I don't know which Powerpuff Girl would be the British Empire or the Japanese Empire. I don't know you enough about the when you're Powerpuff a large world. seafaring nation, you'd be culturally impactful. And the funny thing is, it's not just <laughs> these three that did it. There are plenty of examples of places that did it throughout history. I mean, Venice, even in a smaller extent, boats are just OP in general. Average U.S. carrier, HQ of Vice Admiral Buffalo Bullsey, hit by six Japanese dive bombers and three kamikazes in one day, suffers three more torpedo hits by Japanese submarines while being towed to port, arrives in Pearl Harbor for repairs back to action two days later. Casualties, 12. Meanwhile, the average Japanese aircraft carrier, headquarter of Vice Admiral This Guy, sinks 15 ships in the first week of the war, hit once by famous American dive bomber Hugh Cox, immediately loses power, fires Rip. quickly spreads to armory, causing massive explosion, capsizes and sinks 20 minutes later, with the Admiral <laughs> going to total casualties. Yeah, he went down um, the ship. Yeah, a lot. Only three survived. Yeah, a little bit of a difference, if you couldn't tell, the U.S. had really good carriers, or just things around those carriers that really had way more of them too, and and more protection around those. You got a aircraft carriers are sitting ducks if you don't have a lot of protection. Aircraft carriers only going to be as good as the planes that can defend it and the battleships that can defend it. Factor. American soldiers in World War II when the ice cream ship is late. That's also <laughs> yeah. a pretty big factor. Maybe if the Japanese Navy had a literal ship for just ice cream, they would have done better. And big thanks to the yeah, big true. I'm your dad. Back. <laughs> All right. Final thoughts. All right, you're now prepared for your end of the year or end of the semester uh, world history test. Go ahead and hit up those memes, right? <laughs> hey, and if you didn't know one of them, hey, you go back and you learn about the history and now you're prepared going forward. All right, always fun to check out Drew, uh, Drew's meme collections there. Hopefully I was able to add some commentary and some extra history to it. We'll see you all next time. Bye.